Governments from around the world are upgrading their security standards right now. So even if quantum computers are decades out, whether you think it's a few years away or many decades away, governments are already moving to post-quantum security at a rapid pace. And this is going to bring everything else with it from corporations to retail investors that are watching this. So if you think this is something that you could ignore, it's probably not the case. In this video, we're going to talk about what that means, the ramifications, and exactly what you might be able to do about it. Let's dive into today's episode. Hey everyone, welcome to the QRL show, the place where you come for the crypto and stay for the quantum. Today on our show, my co-host Michael Strike and I are specifically going to be talking about how post-quantum cryptography is becoming the new standard across the board. So no matter what your stance is on quantum computing progress, whether you think it's just around the corner in the coming years, as a lot of the brightest minds and companies have been saying, even governments, or whether you think it's decades out, it doesn't matter. And we're going to really tackle and jump into that in today's episode. So if this is your first time watching our channel, myself and Michael are both part of the core team at the QRL, the Quantum Resistant Ledger, which is the only post-quantum secure blockchain running since 2018 using NIST standards. So therefore, it's a lane that we talk about quite often. Michael, first off, it's good to have you with me. And I'm excited to jump right into the heart of this in terms of the direction post-quantum cryptography is headed. Yep, let's do this. Let's talk about it. Perfect. So with that out of the way, uh, let's get into it. NIST is really driving the standards. Governments around the world are upgrading security standards as we speak. And the same is taking place across a lot of the biggest corporations and companies globally in terms of them moving to post-quantum standards and retail's kind of following suit. Let's start out with this, Michael. What's changing? What's leading the way? Uh, let, let's start, use this as a springboard and, and jump right into it in terms of the general macro direction and then get more micro from there. So here's the difference right now. There is, when we were at the conferences uh, that we've been doing in ETH Denver and Dubai, and one th one shift that I've been noticing is people are coming up, people are, up, are coming up and talking to us about quantum computers. They already know they're starting to get more and more about the threat. There doesn't need to be as much uh, information. There seems to be more information out there regarding this, so people are picking that up. The next question becomes: When do you, the next question? The logical order of things is when do you think quantum computers will be cryptographically relevant, right? So that that's up for that's up for debate by quite a bit, depending on who you talk to. But here's the point. It doesn't really matter. And the reason is because the cryptographic standards themselves are changing and being upgraded at the government level. For example, uh, US, the US has NIST, European Union has ENISA, I think uh, Australia is doing this as well. The, the standards are already being updated. So that kind of takes away from the validity of the question, when are quantum computers going to be relevant anyways? Because now it's to the point where it doesn't really matter. I mean, you just, you have to upgrade. Government's going to set the standards. Corporate's going to follow government and retail is going to follow corporate. If quantum computers never even fully materialize to, to where they're relevant cryptographically, so it doesn't matter. The, the, the standards are changing. So Yeah. So when a, when a government sets a standard, whether it's the US government with some of the uh, pushes that they've done from 2035 down to now 2030, which is only you know several years out with other governments doing the same thing, what does that mean in terms of when a government issues that, what are their expectations for the corporations, those building in the space, and then everyone else to follow? What are the what are they expecting those ne next actions for you know, the industry to move towards when they set that precedence? So the government is expected in most countries to set essentially what is the gold standard for cryptography uh, in the United States, for example. NIST works with researchers, universities, uh, large corporations, Fortune 500 companies, cryptologists. PhDs, they work with a very, very broad set of people with specific skills in cryptography. And most corporations or single entities don't have that degree of reach that the government has. So they're really, they really bring together, they really bring together the known experts in the field. So 
in, in a lot of ways that that's in a lot of ways that's the gold standard. There's there's also depending on the country, there's also uh, compliancy, uh, compliancy technical compliances regarding the cryptography that you probably that you should use. And there's also uh, that may that probably also affects uh, uh, CISO security insurance policies for large IT organizations. Uh, that may that may be on there as well too. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on that, but uh, quite, I'm fully expecting quantum security to be a checkbox on cybersecurity uh, cybersecurity policies. Yeah, and with the you know those NIST standards for post quantum cryptography, uh, this is not for the first part. I think that's important to preface is this is a global movement. It's not specifically tied to one country. Obviously, you have the powerhouses that are kind of leading the way in some some areas, and then the rest follows suit. But uh, first off, it's a it, it, this is global. This is happening in Europe, uh, other parts of uh, Oceania, uh, Asia, North America. You know, it's all across the board. You're kind of seeing it happening a bit more. In terms of the corporations, they need to comply with the government security mandates that are getting put out and adopting different forms of post-quantum cryptography and the solutions that come with it. Could you unpack that part a little bit, whether it's tied to the blockchain area where we're in, financial sectors, um, companies that are multinational? Can you touch a little bit on that in terms of the corporations? I know there's obviously specifics in terms of certain companies saying, hey, we've moved over to be 20%, 40%, 50% post-quantum, uh, whether it's you know Signal, Apple, et cetera. But can you just talk about it more from a, a high level in terms of what some of these organizations are doing to help better inform both those on the retail side and other people at corporations to help encourage them to know where, where the puck's headed, so to speak? Sure. So I've mentioned this before that uh, the standard, the underlying standards are already changing. NIST is already changing the standards for the United States, other agencies across the world, the European, the, excuse me, the European Union, Australia, those are all not just changing the standards, but also moving deadlines forward. And historically, and this is industry specific, at least it is in the United States, whether it's manufacturing, healthcare, they all under, they all operate under different regulatory bodies that all have slightly different standards. But at the end of the day, corporations follow government and retail will follow corporate. And that's because corporate rolls out, part of that's because corporate rolls out software, right? And corporate follows what follows what are, is considered to be the gold standard. And in many cases, that's government grade cryptography. So yeah. it really, it really is interesting because the narrative is now shifting that if you don't even believe in cryptographically relevant quantum computers, okay. If you don't even think that they'll be relevant within the next 10 years, okay. Or even more than 10 years, that's still fine. The standards are still going to need to change. The standards are still changing. And in order to maintain, in order to maintain compliance with those regulatory bodies, you're going to ha- corporations are going to have to upgrade. So it really takes out the point of whether or not quantum computers will ever really be a thing, if you will. The standards have already the standards are already there. The standards are already changing, and uh, every, people are going to have to upgrade. And I think that that definitely translates into the blockchain space. Maybe not at the corporate level right now, so much, but uh, it. it it, I mean, it's going to have to. Bitcoin is going to have to have to upgrade. Bitcoin may be able to hard fork. There's a lot of dependencies there and a lot of magic that needs to happen. But at the end of the day, even if everything goes perfectly with Bitcoin, you will never be able to move all of the existing Bitcoin. It's impossible. And that's and with that, it's it's you're going to need months of downtime. So yeah. these are real problems. <laughs> these are real problems. And this is why we developed the QRL, right? So Pulse yeah. Quantum Secure since the first block with EVM compatibility. And alongside this kind of keeping up to date with what NIST is announcing, what governments are putting out there, I think a couple of good questions that people should be asking is if you are a big company, maybe asking your vendors, hey, what's their, what's on their post-quantum crypto? Like what's on the roadmap? If you're a business, maybe consider moving things to post-quantum. Yeah, on our side, um, you can check out the QRL.org uh, and see what we're we're building with Zond and kind of see, learn more in terms of how that could potentially tie in specific in the blockchain space and expanding yeah. out from there. Any other recommendations for P2 
people, whether they're on the retail side of things. I think on the retail side, there's a lot you can dig into on our channel here. Anything else uh, you would recommend yeah. as steps for people? I mean, first off, pay attention to what's going on. There's a lot of talk in uh, BIPs going on for Bitcoin improvement pros uh, proposals that are proposing post quantum secure upgrades, and people are really, really starting to realize that this is a real that this is a real problem. And second of all, since we follow NAST standards here at the Quantum Resistant Ledger, NAST has done the heavy lifting in ratifying the standards for us. We are doing the heavy lifting for you, so that you don't have to try and decide which blockchain project is most secure or you, you don't it, it makes your vetting process a lot easier if you believe if you if you trust government grade security essentially so we've NAFC has done the heavy lifting for us we've done the heavy lifting for you we've got evm compatibility first of its kind this doesn't exist anywhere else in the world We're moving from proof of work to proof of stake and you'll be able to take Solidity code from, if you're running a contract on Solidity on Ethereum right now, you'll be able to forklift that code up, tweak the addressing, drop it onto the QRL Zond chain, and be Pulse Quantum secure. This doesn't exist anywhere else. It's really exciting. Yeah. No, it's 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 first of its kind. I think whether or not you believe on you know, the quantum computing, it's just around the corner. Many years out, it's there's a shift that's taking place. It's already underway. The code is changing, period, uh, with Zond. Obviously, that brings and opens up a whole new can of worms in an exciting way. Uh, I think for those of you that are watching this, if this is uh, you know, up your alley, it's hitting a chord. I think the, uh, some great resources to go to are the QRL.org. Check out Project Zond and, and what we have if you're watching this. We might be in testnet at that point, or if you're watching this a little bit later, we might already be in mainnet uh, here to really dig in. But obviously, we have a testnet. Developers can jump on and play with it. If it's mainnet's here by the time you're watching this, there's a ton you're going to be able to do at that point. We have a vibrant Discord community, active on social, so you can really uh, jump in and talk and, and see and join the like-minded people in the space. As a, as a last item, anything else, Michael, that you'd like to share with those viewing, uh, regardless uh, of where they're coming, their stance is coming, whether they're leading a big corporation and thinking about post-quantum readiness, or if they're a retail investor who just wants to be proactive in protecting their digital assets and kind of just thinking about it in that lane? Yeah. If uh, I guess the takeaway is for blockchain projects, and since we know that as a fact that things are moving towards post-quantum security particularly if you are an Ethereum blockchain project. I do get asked the question, why should I build on QRL? Well, I'm saying that we're post-quantum secure since the first block. We're essentially Solidity compatible as far as the underlying language that runs our chain. And the only thing you have to do is tweak the addressing. Why would you not <laughs> build on QRL? It's a shorter list. Yeah. As you said, the heavy lifting has been done. We've and, already uh, done it. Yeah. So I think that that kind of wraps it up. I know in this, we, we let in with talking about where the shift's taking place from leading with what the governments are doing, corporations down to retail. And it's it's you can kind of see where the the macro trends of going progress is, you know, getting amplified and, and or getting shorter and shorter as, as things expedite. Uh, but it's exciting stuff to see. And uh, as just a, a last item, we appreciate you taking the time. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Until then, make sure to keep those digital assets post-quantum secure. Check out the QRL.org. And we will see you, myself and Michael, in the next video. See ya. Thank you.